we're all ready to boot into our virtual Debian. Go ahead and hit enter. Uh, be sure to watch out, watch the previous tutorials if you haven't yet to know what's going on. And you'll see inside this virtual machine, it's booting just like a regular Debian machine would on your desktop, except for it's booting in a virtual ARM architecture. So this image can right now be thrown on any ARM device and it should in theory boot. Obviously there's a lot of different devices out there and may not work on all of them. But if you can replace the image or, or take this image and, and um, clone it over to the hard drive, uh, it should run like this. Um, but what we're going to do in this virtual machine before we copy it over to Artros tablet, we're going to create a GUI interface. Um, but if you're running some sort of server where you don't need a GUI interface, this, you're kind of ready to go right here. I'm going to log in as root. Remember, we made the password Debian in the first tutorial. I think it was the first tutorial. Um, <clears throat> and at this point, let's quickly just do an aptitude update and aptitude upgrade. Just to make sure all our software is up to date. So it's going, it's checking uh, the repositories, getting a list of all the packages on the repositories. Once it's done that and it's all updated, then it's going to check for any updates it needs to do and upgrade them. Really shouldn't be anything. Yeah, that's the nice thing about doing a Debian install the way we just did it, the net install. Um, it already downloaded everything, so I figured everything, but it's always good to check. Um, next thing we're going to install, we're going to do aptitude install, and we're going to install the GNOME desktop environment. By the way, I'm hitting tab to autocomplete, but I'm assuming if you're going into this sort of tutorial, you already know that. Um, and I'm also going to install Matchbox and Matchbox-Themes, uh, Themes Extra. So now this is going to take a long time to download because it's going to install Xorg, GNOME, and a bunch of packages. That's, that's the reason I don't normally use Yeah, You can see all the packages it wants to install. I'm going to say yes. It's going to take up a gig and a half once it's downloaded and installed. So, may not be the best option for certain devices. Because um, like I said, it's already going to add a gig and a half to probably, we're probably going to, our four gig image is going to be half used once all this is installed. Um, but depending on what you want to do, I'm just doing it for fun for the tutorial because it's going to have a lot of packages and we don't have to manually set up uh, some xorg stuff, which we may actually go back with the image we copied and do that later on. Um, but with the other package, besides GNOME and all its packages that we're installing, I also installed Matchbox, which is a um, desktop uh, environment, a window manager, uh, that's designed for small devices and uh, touch screens. It's got big buttons and uh, menus that you can go through that take up the full screen. Everything opens up automatically by full screen. Also, it has a, uh, a pretty usable uh, touch screen keyboard. It's not the prettiest by default, and even those themes that were installed and those extra themes aren't the greatest. Um, but I've seen screenshots of some people who have made it look really nice. And um, my old uh, Nokia N800 um, supposedly, I guess that desktop was based on Matchbox, um, and it looked much nicer. So I haven't played too much with themes. You can create your own themes, um, and I guess make it look a lot better. Uh, but you'll see what it looks like once uh, we get it installed and on our Archos tablet. So I'm going to go ahead and let that download. And, uh, yeah, we'll continue from there. I'm just going to pause the video here for a second. Okay, most of the pack all the packages I've downloaded, most of them are, are unpacking now and then they're going to be set up. But I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about a few things. First off, you'll notice in all the package names, they have underscore ARMEL, which is for the ARM processor. Now, not every distribution will have repositories for the ARM architecture. Debian is pretty much the universal operating system. If you look at their website, pretty much any uh, processor type you can think of, they support. Um, uh, and by that I mean, obviously you can compile anything you want, you know, Linux and anything else for those, but Debian has already gone and compiled all the programs in the repositories, uh, for the different architectures. Um, so like we talked earlier in earlier tutorials, uh, x86, which is the majority of your desktops. If you have an older Apple before they used, uh, x86 processors, they, um, they used uh, PowerPC. Debian supports PowerPC, uh, ARM, and Debian has servers set up 
with the it's, it's all their you know I think it's thirty thousand over thirty thousand um, packages in different formats for different processor types. So when you download the Debian ARM installer, you're going to it's going to automatically set up the ARM uh, repositories for you. So you don't have to recompile. So you see, like other operating systems, um, that's why, like when you get like a Windows mobile phone, uh, you can't, you know, just download your Microsoft Office to it and run it because even though your Windows mobile phone might be running Windows and it's compiled for the ARM processor, your regular Microsoft Office for your desktop isn't. Um, so every program has to be compiled for an ARM processor for it to run on that operating system unless you have some sort of compatibility layer going on. Luckily, uh, with Debian, the repositories being open source, everything can be recompiled for ARM. So if you can run it from the default Debian repositories on your desktop, you should be able to, in theory, run it on a device if the device is fast enough. Obviously, some things take more power than, uh, than your cell phone may have, but they can be installed and, in theory, can run. Um, so that's why you're seeing uh, under a lot of these, they'll say ARM, ARMEL, uh, some say all, I guess that's because they don't make a difference. Now, certain things, if that's one of the things I like, I, like I said, I don't do a lot of uh, binary programming. I don't do a lot of uh, C or C++. They're great. They are th probably the two best languages you can learn because almost everything else is based on them. Um, but I'm a scripting guy. I like Python. I like Bash. And the nice thing about Bash and Python scripts is you don't have to compile them. They're just scripts. So you can move from a Windows machine to a Linux machine to a Mac machine to an ARM machine to a PowerPC. And if the script's written properly, um, and there are some exceptions, but the script should run with little or no changes on all those machines. Why? Because Python, which is written probably in C or C++, maybe a combination of the two, um, has already been compiled for different architectures. So your script is not binary, but the interpreter is. So right now you can see right now we're talking about, it, but Python is being installed. Uh, there's some Python packages being installed and those are binary interpreters, parts of Python compiled for the ARM architecture. So your script, if you're writing a script, doesn't have to be uh, rewritten or recompiled or anything because it's not a compiled um, language. Another thing is, um, we just went ahead and installed all these packages, or they're, we're installing them now. And um, as you can see, uh, it said it, it said it in the lines when it was downloading. We're right now the the image we installed was Debian Squeeze, which is the current stable version of Debian. Um, the unstable is called SID. It's always called SID. And I'm trying to remember. I want to say Wheezy is um, is the the uh, the testing. Because Debian always has three sets of repositories going. Uh, and as I said, uh, Squeeze is the stable. Um, and, uh, and so you're going to have older packages. So you may not have like the newest version of Firefox or other applications. But they've been run through tests because they have to go through the other repositories before you get there. Um, and basically what I'm getting at is if you know what you're doing and you want to go with the stable or unstable, and if you know what you're doing, you probably already know this, um, you have to change some files, uh, basically uh, just uh, uh, the, the config file for the aptitude app program uh, to look at different servers. It's very easy to do, uh, not really going into this tutorial, but what I'm getting at is if you're going to do that, you're probably going to want to do it before you start installing a bunch of stuff. Because if you do that, then you're just going to have to reinstall the stuff for the new, for your, for your, when you move over. Um, not a big deal, but if you're going to do that upgrade, you want to do it before you start installing a bunch of different packages. So uh, it's still unpackaging all these packages. Once again, uh, we're installing the GNOME desktop environment, which isn't just GNOME. It's GNOME and a bunch of other packages. Uh, web browsers such as uh, Epiphany, I think, is the um, Epiphany browser is the default bunch of Python packages, which default Python should have already been installed, but different packages like the, I think that what we saw was the GTK package, which is what uh, GNOME is based on. Um, um, and once again, if you're running on a device, you may not want to go this route. We're just doing this to get everything in for the tutorial, um, just for the ease of use, like Cheese, which is a, a webcam program. I haven't tested it on my device yet. In theory, I should be able to open that up and see myself on the webcam that's on my, my Arcos uh, tablet. 
um, but maybe I don't care about that. So that's a package you don't install. So basically, doing this will get you pretty much everything you're going to need for the most part, um, but a lot of stuff you don't need. So it just depends on how much effort you want to put in. And since it's a tutorial, we're going to keep it short just by installing the meta package. Um, and I say the same thing about your desktop. You, you, you're better off, in my opinion, it's all how much effort you want to put in, how much you want to do by yourself. But if you're really doing a Debian install, especially something like this, you're, you're probably a person like me who likes to do things themselves and not have just a package go ahead and make all the decisions for you. Okay, uh, I'm going to pause the recording again because it's still unpacking packaging all these packages. Okay, so that all done, installing and setting up. And uh, we could just uh, probably type start x. Well, let's just do that, start x, and see what happens. I was going to reboot, but really no need for that. And um, obviously right now we're logged in as root. And um, depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want to do that on your device. You know, on a regular computer, I would not recommend that. Um, but, uh, you know, on a tablet maybe you're doing using it for networking stuff and that's a great thing about another great thing about having this an image you can have an image set up just for networking uh you know testing um so if you're a uh, network admin you can go around with your tablet and do testing and then you can just go to another image if you want to do your regular everyday stuff because if you're doing admin stuff you may want to be logged in as admin well there we go we got uh gnome started up what i'm going to do now is um i am going to shut down still loading uh, remember we are running in a virtual machine that's only 256 megabytes uh, which is another reason that uh, no may not be the best option for uh, your tablet device or phone or whatever you're gonna be running this on uh, shut down anyway there we go now I did notice that after I did this um, and I don't think it screwed anything up is I never unmounted the image um, normally I would have unmounted it before I ran the virtual machine. I didn't think that it would boot if it was mounted, um, but I guess it will. Um, so I just learned something new. Also, if you're in the virtual machine, uh, and it grabs your cursor, control alt, it says it up at the top there. See when I click my cursor goes away. If you read the tile bar, it says press control alt, uh, to exit mouse grab. So control alt will free your mouse from the virtual machine. Uh, also when it seems to when you're running an arm, um, uh, operating system in QMU, it, it doesn't ever actually close the virtual machine. It says system halted, and then you can click this to close it. Um, going back to um, unmounting it, uh, you would unmount it the same way you would unmount a regular drive. We'll say sudo umount and where that drive is mounted. And obviously type in your password if you're doing sudo. There we go. So, uh, so, so far so good. We list out here. We've got uh, all this stuff going. Now, there is uh, basically one more thing. Now, there's a few other things you have to do to get it working properly, you know, hardware-wise on the, um, on the Arch uh, Arcos tablet. And also, uh, we want to also pull out, as we said, in this image right now, there's three partitions, and we only need the one. So we're going to have to clone that partition to a new image, rename it as rootfs.img for it to run on the Arcos tablet anyway. Other devices may be different. Um, and then we'll also look back at the debian-arcos.com uh, site for some things they have about uh, changing some stuff to get to boot properly and also um, getting Wi-Fi and other stuff working properly. So... Uh, Keep on watching for our next tutorial. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link with, to that and more information in the description. Thank you very much and have a great day.